y'all what's good beautiful people it's your girl tay and i'm here yet again with another update video so definitely make sure you guys smash that like button comment down below subscribe plus push your post notification bell button so that way anytime you upload a video i upload a video you will be notified so don't talk about my bear you guys don't i, I don't know if you guys can see that or not because of the way that i have the camera um uh, but i can see him this is my bear this is this is this is everybody's bear. I'm, we we gonna call this the house bear. He gonna join us for this video today because everybody just loves to hold him, sleep on him, and whatever. But he's mine. He's mine. But anyways, jumping right into the news. First thing I want to let you guys know. Um, I did get your comments yesterday about the audio. So I was using a plug-in microphone in that video that I usually use with my other camera. Uh, but I'm thinking that because this device probably has more powerful um, microphone that it wasn't really working. So y'all let me know how the audio sounds on this. I'm not using a plug-in microphone today. It's completely quiet. You know what I mean? Which is surprising for my house because it never is. So let me know how the audio sounds. I did notice it sounded a little bit low um, as well yesterday when I was doing the editing. So I'm hoping that um, it sounds okay without me having to use a microphone. If not, I'm going to have to invest in some more equipment. But anyways, jumping right into things. The first thing that I want to talk about was released by The Guardian three hours ago. It says Biden to announce the largest release of oil reserves in effort to curb gasoline prices. Okay. Um, don't Biden has announced plans to release up to 1 million barrels. I'm, I'm assuming that's what it means. It just says 1M, 1 million barrels of oil a day from the strategic reserve in attempt to contain high gasoline prices and curb inflation exacerbated by the war in Ukraine. So a lot of you guys were saying that you don't think that the, the fact that the prices are rising has anything to do with Ukraine. You guys were giving some very specific information. Some were saying that we only get 7% of our oil from, you, uh, from uh, Russia and Ukraine or whatever. Um, and so that's not why we're experiencing such high prices. And I believe that to be true. Um, you never know. But in a statement, the White House said, after consultation with allies and partners, the president will announce the largest release of oil reserves in history, putting 1 million additional barrels on the market per day on average every day for the next six months. So hopefully we get to see some relief in terms of these prices because it's killing me. I know it's killing y'all. It's definitely killing me. The White House indicated Biden will speak later on, uh, today actually about how he intends to lower gas prices for americans global oil prices dropped sharply when news broke earlier of biden's expected announcement okay um the administration is reportedly considering extending the release for as long as six months with a potential limit of 180 million barrels drawn from the current national reserve of 568 million barrels okay so not bad not bad. What y'all think? Y'all think it's going to help? I hope it does. Um, going a little bit further into this article, it says that according to the American uh, Automobile Association, the U.S. average now stands at 4.23 a gallon, up to $2.87 a year ago, okay? I don't see how the national average is 4.23 a gallon, but... I hope what I will say is even though I like this, I do hope that all of these states and um, even the House of Representatives and the Senate, they were seriously considering sending out some uh, gas rebate checks or tax surplus checks or whatever it is. They wanted to send out some type of check, okay? You can just basically call it a stimulus check, but they're just putting a different name on it um, because of the fact that we were experiencing extremely high gas prices, okay? I hope that this doesn't stop that initiative. I hope that they continue to go on further with that because realistically, people still need help, whether it's for gas, whether it's for utilities, whether it's for rent, whether it's just for household necessities, people still need use, uh, assistance. Now, I don't expect that they're going to give us a large amount like they did when we were still pretty much in the thick of it when they were giving us $1,200 per person and all of that. But even $400 and then $100 per uh, dependent or whatever it is that they're trying to do for a monthly basis, I would appreciate that. I know you guys would appreciate that. So that's my only concern, you know. Um, extraordinary measures, including gas rebates, are being considered by California, the worst hit state where an average gallon of petrol now costs close to $6, which is what I'm paying. Any U.S. release of national reserves is likely to be coordinated with other countries under the auspices of the International Energy Agency, okay? As a part of his sanctions for the Ukraine invasion, the Biden administration earlier this month imposed a ban on Russian oil imports. Russia is the second largest exporter of crude oil in the world. I think that's pretty much all we need to gather from this particular article. I think you guys got the point. Hopefully we see some relief soon. And hopefully, like I said, that doesn't deter them from um, wanting to give us money for 
high gas prices or just high prices, period, okay? Um, now, yesterday, I did talk to you guys a little bit about the task force that was assigned by our governor, Gavin Newsom, here in California as it pertains to the reparations for African Americans, okay, and how they were discussing or getting ready to vote on whether or not they felt like those reparations should go to every African American person or whether it should just be for those who can prove a direct lineage to uh, slaves, okay? So, they voted on it, and they voted that you have to prove in some way, shape, or form. And I'm not exactly sure if we have to prove it or um, if they're going to have that information in the database somewhere and then automatically send out payments. I have no idea at this point. They're still working out a lot of details this particular uh uh, task force as it pertains to the reparations, but they did vote and they did decide that it's best to send the reparations to those who have a direct lineage to um, enslaved Africans. It says, after more than six hours of debate Tuesday, California's Reparations Task Force voted that only Black Californians who can prove a direct lineage to enslaved ancestors will be eligible for the statewide and first-in-the-nation initiative to address the harms and enduring legacy of slavery. The nine-member task force voted 5-4 in favor of defining eligibility for reparations based on lineages, 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 uh, lineage, I'm sorry, determined by an individual being an African-American a uh, dis descendant of a chattel uh, enslaved uh. person or the descendant of a free black person living in the U.S. prior to the end of the 19th century, the motion read. An earlier amendment to the motion pushed for a broader definition of eligibility that would have included all 2.6 million African Americans in California with special consideration for those with direct lineage to enslaved persons. That amendment failed, okay? Two years ago, Governor Gavin, Gavin Newsom signed legislation giving special consideration to black Americans who are direct descendants to enslaved people, um, authored by former assembly member Shirley Weber, now the California Secretary of State. The bill also established a two-year reparations task force to study and develop a plan on what reparations may look like. The task force is expected to release a reparations proposal in June of 2023 with recommendations for a legislator, okay? While the scope of the reparations will be determined in the coming months, many task force members said they expect cash payments to be one part of the proposal as well as a formal apology. The task force said this eligibility determination will help uh, economists tasked with quantifying the amount of reparations owed. And then it goes into a little bit of jargon of how they feel and they say, the system that folks are advocating for here, uh, where we splice things up, where only one small slice of benefits will not abate the harms of racism, okay? So y'all let me know how you feel about that down below in the comment section. Moving on from that, one thing that I did note that I did want to share with you guys, we're going to jump a little bit into what's going on with Social Security benefits. It says Social Security could get a 7.6% raise in 2023, but it's not all good news. Now, this was released two days ago by The Motley Fool. It says, for years, seniors on Social Security have been forced to grapple with subpar cost of living adjustments or COLAs. Those stingy COLAs, I like how they call it stingy because that's what it is. Y'all know that's my word. Those stingy COLAs have caused beneficiaries to lose buying power, resulting in immense financial stress. Okay, this year, Social Security recipients finally got the largest COLA that they've been waiting for, a 5.9% boost that took effect effective at the start of 2022. But now the nonpartisan Senior Citizens League is estimating the 2023's cost of living adjustment could blow that 5.9% raise out of the water. Now, to be perfectly honest, and y'all know I sympathize with you a lot. I truly understand. You know, I have a grandparent that ha lives off of a fixed income, so I understand full aware of what that looks like, okay? I've also worked with seniors for a very long time um, when I was a CNA, so I, I, I know what this looks like. I know how stressful it is, um, and I do understand. What they don't seem to understand is that even though for them it's a 59 percent increase they feel like that's doing something but it's not doing anything especially when we're dealing with inflation people are seeing what 45 50 dollars maybe not even that in terms of an increase in their benefits and meanwhile everything else has shot sky high so it's not really helping i'm i'm i, I just i'm i don't mean a deb to be a debbie downer but I honestly even though i think this is good news at the same time i'm like well if the six seven point six percent raise does take into effect next year that'd be great but then if we're still going through inflation and the cost of living goes up next year then it's like you're, we're, they're never going to catch up 
you're never going to catch up. That's 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 the point I'm trying to get to. Will seniors get an even bigger raise in 2023? Based on recent inflation, on the recent inflation date, the Senior Citizens League is estimating the seniors on Social Security could be in line for a 7.6% COLA cost of living adjustment in 2023, okay? Then it goes on to talk about how COLAs are calculated based on changes in the consumer price index for urban wage earners and clerical workers, also known as cpi w and they're also specifically based on third quarter data, which means it's way too soon to have a definitive handle on next year's COLA. And I 100% agree because even though a 7.6% jump is good, if the cost of living itself goes up, then it's still not going to make a difference. They're still going to everybody's still going to be in the same predicament that they're in now, the same predicament they were in prior to the 5.9 increase. So they need to do something to where it actually makes a difference if you're going to increase the cost of living then i and this is me personally i don't know if this type of stuff exists i know that they have out here in california they do have uh delegated affordable housing for senior citizens but here's my thinking if i was a politician i'm not a politician i've never worked in politics i don't favor politics i have no no uh no uh what's the word I don't want to work in the government whatsoever at all. I don't. I just, I feel like once you get in, that's like a black hole. You get sucked in and then you can't find your way back out. So no, but if I were to take up a position in there, um, I would want to have affordable housing delegated to senior citizens. Okay. I would want them to have housing that's not going to increase you know what i mean that's not going to cause a strain on them so if they are getting an increase in their benefits okay maybe the calculations for the rent payments um does go up because you have things do have to go up if everything else is going up the person who owns a building if that's going up they have to pay higher bills i do get all of that but i would try to make it to where the cost of living increase doesn't create such a gap um between their living expenses and their actual finances if that makes any sense okay so if i had a, a an apartment building and i said okay everybody who comes in here and they only have a one bedroom is going to pay 700 dollars. just for an example cost of living i'm not going to raise the rent to a thousand dollars next year i'm not going to raise the rent to twelve hundred dollars fifteen hundred you know what i'm saying like there would have to be something in place to prevent rent control basically is what i'm trying to say but different because rent control to me doesn't they need to redo that system as well but y'all get what I'm trying to say. Um, it says, or to put it another way, a 7.6% COLA would not create a scenario where Social Security benefits come out ahead financially. Okay, I'm glad somebody is being honest about it. In fact, that's the problem with generous COLAs. There's a reason for them, and that reason is higher living expenses. And so when benefits rise, seniors don't really gain much from that. So they pretty much said what I have been saying um, all along. They are fully aware that when they give you guys an increase in your benefits, this is not just uh, so Social security any any amount any benefits if you're getting TANF if you're getting temporary assistance for needy families if you're getting cow works or whatever it's called in your state if you're getting any type of assistance from the government and they send you a document that says hey we're going to give you a 52 dollar increase because the cost of a living blah, blah 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 you almost very rarely if not never see that increase that you received a notice about because of the cost of living increase itself okay so meanwhile they're going to give you an extra 50 dollars but your rent just went up like two three hundred dollars you know what i'm trying to say they need to fix that system as as a whole um i think that's all um that i wanted to share with you guys today i'm just taking a little bit of a quick look um i did get a chance to look at emergency stat maximum benefits earlier today it is about 1208 in the afternoon pacific standard time i'm going to look again because i was earlier this morning um so let me take a quick look. I don't think anything has changed on that front. I'm not going to be going over the payout dates because I did go over that in yesterday's video, but I will try to put a short picture on the screen of the names of the states that have currently been approved for emergency snap maximum benefits for the month of April. Mm, you know, they're taking a little bit longer than normal. We're at the end of the month in terms of March is concerned. And you would think that there would be more states added to this list. Still have hope. You know what I mean? We still have all the way up until April the 15th. I still haven't heard anything um, and as it pertains to them actually extending the state of emergency declaration. I don't know if that has happened. I'm still going to do some research. I've been looking out for it. I haven't seen anything to suggest that that has happened. So as of right now, benefits are expected to expire forever 
everybody in every state as of the 15th of April, which is next month, okay? But as of right now, for emergency SNAP maximum benefits for the month of April, we have Alabama, Colorado, D.C., Georgia, Illinois, Indiana, Maine, Michigan, New Hampshire. I don't know if New Hampshire was on there. Hold on, y'all. Let me just take a quick... Nope, it's not. I'm not going to give you all the other ones, but I will give you New Hampshire because I knew that one was not on there. I pretty much got that list memorized. So let me take a look at that information really, really, really quickly. So for New Hampshire, we have April the 3rd and the 15th, and then we have May the 3rd and May the 20th, okay? I'm not sure if I gave you guys that information yesterday. It's not on my list, so I'm just going to assume that I didn't. We have New Jersey, North Carolina, Ohio. Is Ohio on here? I think Ohio is on here, but let me just double check. Nope, Ohio is not on here, so I am going to look that up really quick. Okay, so for Ohio, it says April the 27th, Ohio will not provide um, emergency allotments with regular issuance schedule. All allotments are expected to be issued on April the 22nd, 2022 for Ohio. Okay, then we have Oregon, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, South Carolina, Virginia, Washington, West Virginia, Wisconsin, and Wyoming. And I think all of those I did go over in yesterday's video. Yes, I did. So if you guys didn't get a chance to check out yesterday's video, you might want to check that out because I went over all of the payout dates minus the two that I just went over today because they weren't approved yesterday. Um, same thing goes for pandemic EBT. If you're looking for whatever may have been updated as of this week, I did do a dedicated video on Monday of this week where I went over the payout information for pandemic EBT. Doesn't look like any additional states has been added to that list as well. But I am going to go over that really quickly. So for the current school year, 2021-2022, for pandemic EBT benefits, we have American Samoa, Colorado, Delaware, Florida, Indiana, Kentucky, Louisiana, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, Nebraska, New Mexico, North Carolina, Ohio, Puerto Rico, Rhode Island, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, Vermont, Virginia, West Virginia, and Wisconsin, you guys. All right, that is absolutely all that I have for you guys in today's video. I hope this information was in some way helpful or useful to you guys in the least little bit. Do me a favor if you haven't already, don't forget to smash that like button because it really does help to let you two know that you like what I'm doing and you want me to stick around. As always, you guys, um, oh yeah. Don't forget to drop a heart down below. Today, we're going to pick yellow, okay? So if you did make it all the way to the end of this video, drop a yellow heart down below, okay? And on that note, you guys, as always, I'm going to say, remember to live, love, and elevate. And I will definitely see you guys in my next video. Bye, y'all.